stay wild, my child. <laughs> jumped out of bed. Wake up, Mom! She cried. It's morning! <sighs> the sun was shining, the birds were singing. Zoe and her mom had a whole day to spend together. They were going to have a lot of fun. <laughs> First, they went to the library. Look at all the books. Shh, said Miss Foster, pointing at the sign. No loud talking or yelling. Oh? Zoe looked up at her mom. Really? She asked. Never? Not here, said Mom. But... Next, Zoe and her mom went to the park. This way, said Mr. Jones, waving his spade. No walking on the grass. Mm. Zoe looked up at her mom. Really? She asked. Never? Not here, said Mom. But... Here! Run wild, my child! <laughs> Watch out, here I come! <laughs> Zoe and her mom went to Grandma's house for a visit. Come in! cried Grandma, opening the door. No wet shoes. Huh? Zoe looked up at her mom. Really? She asked. Never? Not here, said mom. But... <laughs> here! Splash wild, my child! It was time for Zoe to go to school. It's painting day, said Mrs. Scott, and parents are welcome to stay. Zoe's friend said, paint goes on paper, not on you. <laughs> Zoe looked up at her mom. Really? She asked. Never. Not here, said Mom. But... Here! <laughs> Paint wild, my child. <laughs> <laughs> After school, Zoe and her mom took buttons for a walk and stopped by a store. A sign read, No children playing in the store. Hmm. Zoe looked up at her mom. Really? She asked. Never? Not here, said Mom, but... Here! Play wild, my child! Whee! I can touch the sky! Higher, Mommy, higher! <laughs> Soon, it was time for Zoe to go on a play date. Come with me, said Ada, grabbing Zoe's hand. 
we're going to make a couch fort. All right, girls, but no climbing. Ugh. Zoe looked up at her mom. Really? She asked. Never? <laughs> Not here, said mom. But... Here! Climb wild, my child! <laughs> Look at me! Uh -huh. <laughs> After a long day of fun, it was time for bed. <sighs> Pajama time, said Mom. Snuggle under the covers. No more adventures today, said Mom, tucking Zoe in. <sighs> Zoe looked up at her mom. <sighs> really? She asked. Not now, said Mom, but... <sighs> now, she whispered. Dream wild, my child. A yellow bike, a little Craig book, a book about rising above. This is a story about little Craig Robinson. In his town, kids came in all different shapes and sizes and colors. But even though they were different, every kid in Craig's town wanted the same exact bike. It was shiny. It was a 10-speed. And it was as yellow as a lemon popsicle. Wow. Craig had wanted it ever since he saw it in the window display at the local department store. Please. Hmm. After lots of asking, Lots of chores and lots of homework. This is hard work. Mom finally said, Let's go buy that bike. Zoom! All the kids in Chicago were off. Race you to Rainbow Beach, Craig hollered. He soared past the kite flyers and swimmers. Craig was so proud of his new bike. He rode all the way to the ice cream stand where he was first in line. One double scoop chocolate brownie ice cream, please. He coolly asked the ice cream man. But before he got his ice cream, a tall police officer stepped right in front of Craig. His shirt was a brilliant shade of blue. <clears throat> Not so fast, the policeman said. I'm going to have to take that bike. But, but sir. Craig looked at his new bike shining in the rainbow beach sun 
Why are you taking my bike? Craig asked in a panic. Because this bike was reported stolen. The officer replied gruffly. Oh, I didn't steal it. My mom just bought it for me. Craig told the truth. The policeman was already packing his bike into the trunk of the car. I know you stole it, kid. <gasps> no. I'll drive you home, and we can talk to your mom. Get in. Oh, man. Craig's little heart sank as he climbed into the back of the police car. When they finally pulled up, Craig ran to find Mom. She would know what to do. What is going on here? He, he thinks I stole my new bike. Huh? Her face turned a bright shade of red. Oh. He had never seen Mom look quite like that before. Go on inside, Craig. <sighs> Craig watched from his bedroom window as Mom spoke to the policeman. She waved her finger. She shook her head. She put her hands on her hips. Finally, he lifted Craig's bike out of the trunk, placed it on the lawn, and drove away. Mom called for Craig to come out and get his bike. He leaped out the front door. Why, why did he think I stole my own bike, Mom? How about I tell you over ice cream? One double scoop chocolate brownie ice cream. Actually, better make that too. Mom and Craig sat in the park. The tasty ice cream made Craig feel better. What do you see out there? Mom asked. Some kids playing together, Craig answered. That's right, Craig. But some people would only see the differences between those kids. They are different shapes and sizes. The color of their skin is different too. Because of your skin color, people aren't always going to be nice to you. They may call you names or treat you differently. They may even think they're better than you. That's called racism. And it's why the policeman thought you stole your bike. But the policeman had the same color skin as I do. Why would he treat me different? Hmm. Prejudice can take all shapes and sizes, Craig. Even people who look like you may still treat you unfairly. Suddenly, Craig's ice cream didn't taste as sweet. But remember, Craig, Mom reassured him, no one can make you feel bad if you feel good about yourself. So, if I feel good about me, Craig wondered, then it doesn't matter what other people think of me? That's right, Mom beamed. You know who you are, Craig. And you sure look good riding that bike. Yeah, I'm pretty fast, too.
Mom drove home. Craig saw his bike waiting for him on the front lawn, right where he'd left it. One more ride, Mom? Please? <laughs> All right, one more. A note from Craig Robinson. What you just read is a true story that happened to me when I was a young boy growing up in Chicago. At that age, I was just learning how to deal with adversity. When kids were judgmental or mean, my parents would encourage me to put myself in their shoes and try to understand them. Sometimes, people acted mean because they felt insecure. My mom would comfort me by saying, no one can make you feel bad if you feel good about yourself. But the incident with the police officer felt different. When the officer wouldn't believe me and accused me of stealing my own bike, I was heartbroken and confused. When mom saw me crawling out of that police car, she could have assumed the worst and wondered what I did to get myself into trouble. Instead, she instantly came to my side and was there to help. She believed in me and stood up for me. After the incident, mom even went down to the police station got the police officer to come back to our house, and he apologized to me for what he had done. It was an amazing display of standing up for what is right and actually affecting change. In difficult situations, it can sometimes be hard to find silver linings. Mom always helped me see that even the hardest situation can be a chance to learn and grow. She knows when it's time to take a rest.
courageous first ladies who changed the world. Washington. I have learned that the greater part of our misery or unhappiness is determined not by our circumstance, but by our disposition. Martha grew up working on a farm with six younger siblings. She learned that anything a boy could do, she could do too. During the Revolutionary War, Martha showed great courage. She came to winter camps, nursed sick soldiers, and brainstormed strategies. As the first First Lady, Martha welcomed to her home anyone who wanted to discuss the new country. Abigail Adams. Remember the ladies and be more generous and favorable to them than your ancestors. Abigail's parents taught her to visit the sick, feed the hungry, and bring clothes to the cold. When Abigail married John Adams, she didn't know that one day she would be Mrs. President. Grateful for her big heart and smart mind, John regularly asked Abigail for ideas. She wanted women to have rights in their new country and taught her children to fight against slavery. Dolly Madison. Habit and hope are the crutches which support us through the vicissitudes of life. Dolly helped her mother run a boarding house to earn money. That's where she met James, who later became her husband and the President of the United States. love discussing the needs of the country. What do you think about this? She'd ask. What should we do about that? She invited leaders to her home often and held the first inaugural ball. In 1812, when the White House was on fire, Dolly made sure an important portrait of George Washington was safe. Roosevelt. You must do the thing you think you cannot do. Eleanor was just nine years old when she became an orphan and went to live with her grandmother. It was a lonely childhood with lots of time to think, but she studied hard and learned about all kinds of ideas. In her time as First Lady, Eleanor fought for fair pay, equal rights, good living conditions, and better treatment for workers. Some people say she was the most important First Lady in history. Jacqueline Kennedy. There are many little ways to enlarge your child's world. Love of books is the best of all. Jackie always had a gift with language. Her essays and poems were published in newspapers. And she could speak English, French, Spanish, and Italian. While 
While in the White House, Jackie helped her husband write inspiring speeches to rally the country. Her love of the arts brought opera, dance, Shakespeare, and even the Mona Lisa to the Capitol. The American people love Jackie's sense of style and elegance. Betty Ford. The search for human freedom can never be complete without freedom for women. Betty often went with her mother to help children who couldn't walk on their own. She learned a lot about how people should be treated. When she became First Lady, Betty fought for equal pay for everyone. She created a place for people who struggled with addictions. She also opened up about her own struggles with cancer letting the country know it was okay to have weaknesses. Lady Bird Johnson. Where flowers bloom, so does hope. Claudia's nanny once said she was as pretty as a ladybird. The nickname stuck. One of Lady Bird's favorite things to do was paddle on the lake near her home. Lady Bird's love of the outdoors only grew. As First Lady, she was committed to making the capital beautiful. planted millions of flowers along the routes and made sure areas with natural beauty and wildlife were kept safe for everyone to enjoy. Laura and Barbara Bush. Never lose sight of the fact that the most important yardstick of your success will be how you treat other people. Barbara Bush. Barbara spent many evenings reading together with her family. Her love of books came with her all the way to the White House. As First Lady, Barbara wanted every child to know how to read. Barbara's son, George, later became president like his dad. George's wife, Laura, followed Barbara's lead when she became First Lady. As a second grade teacher and school librarian, Laura knew that teaching children could change the world. Hillary Clinton. It is past time for women to take their rightful place side by side with men, in the rooms where the fates of peoples, where their children's and grandchildren's fates are decided. Hillary once saw a group collecting money for the poor. She made a backyard carnival for neighborhood kids and donated all the dimes and nickels she earned. First Lady, Hillary argued for changes that would help women and children. She also became a state senator and secretary of state. In 2016, Hillary came closer than any woman in history to becoming president of the United States. Michelle Obama. There are still many causes worth sacrificing for. 
So much history yet to be made. Michelle did so well in school, she was able to skip a grade and graduate early. She loved learning and was accepted to one of the best universities in the world, Princeton. Michelle was a lawyer when her husband, Barack, became the first African-American president in U.S. history. As First Lady, she focused on raising her two daughters and helping our country get fit. She championed exercise and healthy eating and planted the first White House garden. These First Ladies made a difference in the world. What kind of hero will you be? Landon rides the subway. Today was an exciting day. The sun was shining. The birds were chirping. And Landon's mom had promised to take him to the museum. <laughs> <laughs> he had heard so much about the museum. Big dinosaur bones. A room full of butterflies. And a giant whale hanging off the ceiling. <laughs> He hurried and got dressed extra quickly today. Not only were they going to the museum, they were going to ride the subway. Landon held his mom's hand as they hurried down the long stairs. Under the big city he loved so much, Landon heard music playing. He saw people dancing, and there was even a clown. What a great place this was. It was a whole new world. Mom looked for the right sign and found the way to the train. <laughs> the train was wow. roaring through the tunnel so fast. Wow. Landon could see the train lights getting closer. <laughs> The train was here. The doors opened and everyone walked onto the train. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. The doors closed and off they went to the museum. Landon and his mom. Landon looked all around the train. It was magical. Whoa. All of a sudden, a man started singing. It was a beautiful song. Landon had heard this song before. It was a 
was a song from one of his favorite movies. The next stop came, and the conductor said it was the stop for the museum. Landon and his mom got off the train. <laughs> The man behind the counter handed Landon his ticket to the museum. Wow, look at those dinosaurs, said Landon. The museum was more amazing than Landon had imagined. I love you, Mama. And I love you, Landon. <laughs> Mama, the subway can take you to some really fun places. don't have books, then what are you waiting for? Books is kids safe, it has storybooks that are brought to life, and third, it's fun. I like to read books about fantasy and love. I tell other kids to get books because it's full of stories and laughter. I'll read it on the go, in a car, in a plane, even in a train. I've never been on a train. Don't wait around. Ask your grown-up to download books now. You'll be glad you did. Thanks for watching. For more stories, try the Vox app for free today.